Okay, class, today we're in section 8.8, .8, factor polynomials completely. Before, you factor polynomials. Now, you will factor polynomials completely. Key vocabulary, factor by grouping, and factor completely. You have used the distributive property to factor a greatest common monomial from a polynomial. Sometimes you can factor out a common binomial. Example 1. Factor out a common binomial. Factor the expression 2x times x plus 4 minus 3 times x plus 4. Solution. Take a look at 2x times x plus 4 minus 3 times x plus 4. Notice what they have in common. They have the binomial x plus 4 in common. So that means that can be factored out. And when you factor out the x plus 4, what's the only thing you have left? You have a 2x left, that's there. And you have a negative 3 left, that's there. So your final answer is x plus 4 times 2x minus 3. All right, now for those of us who are confused a little bit, this is just like factoring out before, except that now you're factoring out a binomial as opposed to a monomial. So here's our original problem. We can see that x plus 4 and x plus 4, uh, x plus 4 is what they have in common. So we're going to factor out that x plus 4. When we factor out, this is the process. So we're going to say, take out the x plus 4. That means this is being divided by x plus 4. And this is being divided by x plus 4. Well, when you divide this by x plus 4, what's left? You can easily see that x plus 4 is going to cancel out here. So what are you left with? You're left with 2x. And you can see that x plus 4 is going to cancel out here. So what are you left with? Negative 3. And that's your answer. And that's the entire process. Now, this whole lesson is based on this technique. So once again, you write out the original problem. You find out what binomial they have in common. You write it down. And then you factor it out. So 2x times x plus 4 divided by x plus 4, they're going to cross out, and you're left with just 2x. A negative 3 times x plus 4 divided by x plus 4, the x plus 4s will cancel out, and you're left with just a negative 3. And you have your answer. Okay, let's take a look at example 1b. We got 3y squared times y minus 2 plus 5 times 2 minus y. The binomials y minus 2 and 2 minus y are opposites. Factor out or factor negative 1 from 2 minus y to obtain a common binomial factor. So you take the original polynomial and you're going to factor out what they have in common. But before you do that, you're going to make 5 times 2 minus y opposite. So it can match up with this. So you're going to end up saying 3y squared times y minus 2. Now you're going to factor out that negative so that positive 5 will become a negative 5. The positive 2 will become a negative 2. And the negative y will become a positive y. That's because you factored out the negative 1 from 2 minus y. So now you have your common binomial, which is y minus 2. So you factor that out. And when you do, you're going to say 3 times y squared times y minus 2 divided by y minus 2. That's a fancy way of saying these two will cancel out. And you're left with 3y squared. Here, you got a negative 5 divided by y minus, excuse me, a negative 5 times y minus 2 divided by y minus 2 because that's what you're factoring out. So this and this would cancel and you're left with negative 5. So your final answer is y minus 2 times 3y squared minus 5. All right, now for those of us that are confused on the opposite, notice this says y minus 2, that's that one. And this says 2 minus y, that's that one. Currently, they are opposites. Here the y is positive, and here the y is negative. 
Here the two is negative, and here the two is positive. So we're going to factor out a negative from this one to make it the same. So that means we're going to just say negative. We factor it out, and everything becomes its opposite. So a positive 2 becomes a negative 2. A negative y becomes a positive y. And I can rewrite that as y minus 2. So now they both say y minus 2. And in this case, there was a 5 there. That's why it says a negative 5 here times y minus 2. Other than that, the process is the same as just working like, just like we worked out example 1a. Grouping. You may be able to use the distributive property to factor polynomials with four terms. Factor a common binomial from pairs of terms, then look at a common binomial factor. This is called factoring by grouping. Example 2, factor by grouping. Factor the polynomial. x to the third power plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 15. Solution. x to the third power plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 15 is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared. Notice how we group those two together. The highest term followed by the next highest term. And then we group together the 5x plus the 15. So we group terms. Now we group terms so we can factor out that monomial they told us to factor out. So now I got x to the third power plus 3x squared. What is their greatest common factor? x squared. So now I'm going to factor out that x squared. What's x to the third power divided by x squared? That's going to be x. What is 3x squared divided by x squared? The x squared is going to cancel out, so I'm just left with 3. I come and look at my next group. I got 5x plus 15. Well, what's the greatest common factor between 5x and 15? That's going to be 5. What is 5x divided by 5? x. What's 15 divided by 5? 3. So now I'm going to factor out once again. Now I notice that I have a common binomial. Just like in example one, what binomial do they have in common? X plus three. And I already know from the previous process that this is going to cancel and this is going to cancel when I divide it by X plus three. So when I divide this by X plus three, that's gone. So I'm just left with X squared. And when I divide this term by X plus three, that's the X plus three is gone and I'm left with just five. So my final answer is x plus 3 times x squared plus 5. All right, let's take a look at b. b, we have y squared plus y plus yx plus y. Now we're going to look at this real careful and notice that here all we have is y's together. That's what we want. And here we have x's together. So we can pair the x's together and then the y's together. Now, even though this has a y, it has an x, so it matches up with this one. All right, so we end up with a pair of y squared plus y and a pair of yx plus x. Look at y squared plus y. What is its greatest common factor? y. y squared divided by y would give you y. y divided by y would give you 1. Here we got yx plus x. What's the greatest common factor? x. What is yx divided by x? y. x is going to cancel out. And what is x divided by x? 1. So once again, we take a look and we see we can factor one more time, and we can factor out the binomial y plus 1. All right, when we factor out y plus 1, we bring it down here, y plus 1, but we know we're going to divide here by y plus 1 and here by y plus 1. That's a fancy way of saying that this is going to cancel out. And when the y plus 1's cancel out, what are we left with? y. And when this y plus 1 cancels out, what are we left with? x. Final answer, y plus x, excuse me, y plus 1 times y plus x. Okay, example 3, factor by grouping. Here we're doing the same thing we did in example 2. However, they're not putting them in order for us. We have to match them up. Notice, x to the third minus 6, nothing in common. 
All right, so we got to match the x to, x to the third up with that uh, negative 3x squared. So solution, the terms x to the third and negative 6 have no common factor. Use the community property to rearrange the terms so that you can group the terms with a common factor. So in other words, we take the original uh, polynomial, and we're going to take x to the third, and right after that, we're going to write a negative 3x squared. So now we got the x's in common. And here we got 2x minus 6. And here we can see that the 2 and the 6, we can probably factor some out there. All right, so now you got x to the third minus 3x squared. All right, so you ask yourself, what is the greatest common uh, factor? And you realize that it's going to be x squared. All right, so x to the third divided by x squared is x. A negative 3x squared divided by x squared, you're left with just 3. Don't forget, these two will cancel out. So you're just left with just the, uh, the negative 3. Over here, we got 2x minus 6. All right, so what's the greatest common factor between these two? It's going to be 2. 2x divided by 2 will give you x. And then 6 divided by 2 will give you 3. And don't forget the negative. Now we're going to factor out the common binomial, which is x minus 3. And you can see it is in both places, so it's common. All right, so we write down the x minus 3, and we realize when we factor out, that's like dividing by. So what's x minus 3 divided by x minus 3? That's going to be 1, so I'm left with just x squared. What's x minus 3 divided by x minus 3? That's going to be 1, so I'm left with just 2. So my final answer is x minus 3 times x squared plus 2. Factoring completely, you have seen that the polynomial x squared minus 1 can be factored as x plus 1 times x minus 1. This polynomial is factorable. Notice that the polynomial x squared plus 1 cannot be written as a product of polynomials with integer coefficients. This polynomial is unfactorable. A factorable polynomial with integer coefficients is factored completely if it is written as a product of unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients. Alright, here is a concept summary of all the techniques that you have learned so far in Chapter 8. Make sure you read this on your own to be sure you're familiar with the techniques you should be using. Guidelines for factoring polynomials completely. To factor a polynomial completely, you should try each of these steps. 1. Factor out the greatest common monomial factor. 2. Look for a difference of two squares or a perfect square trinomial. 3. Factor a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c into a product of binomials. And 4. Factor a polynomial with four terms with four terms by grouping. Example 4. Factor completely. Factor the polynomial completely. Our first one is n squared plus 2n minus 1. Solution. The terms of the polynomial have no common monomial factors. So between n squared, 2n, and minus 1, there's nothing they have in common. Also, there are no factors of negative 1 that have a sum of 2. So this polynomial cannot be factored. So if you look at negative 1, and you try to come up with negative 1 through multiplication, but try to add to come out with a positive 2, it can't happen. A negative 1 excuse me, 1 plus a negative 1 will give you 0, and a negative 1 plus 1 will also give you 0. So that doesn't happen. So because of that, you can't factor out a common factor, and, and you can't come up with 2 uh, through addition when you have to have a negative 1 through multiplication. So this one right here is not factorable. All right, so let's take a look at B. B, we got 4x to the third power minus 44x squared plus 96x. Here, we can factor out a 4x. And after factoring out that 4x, we will end up with x squared minus 11x plus 24. Well, what number is it, or what two numbers is it that would give us a positive 24 when multiplying, but when adding would give us a negative 11? That's going to be a negative 3 and a negative 8. So our final answer then is going to be 4x, squared, 4x times x minus 3 times x minus 8. Okay, we're going to continue with uh, part C, 4C, and uh, part 2 of the video.